Welcome to Author Mastery. We are with multiple best-selling author, Maria Laxing, and we are in for a treat with a conversation about understanding not only how to write a bestseller, how to write a non-fiction bestseller, which I know so many of you are interested in, but also how to write a fiction and children's book bestseller, because Maria, an incredible, passionate advocate of chiropractic, has written Semi the Centipede Goes to the Chiropractor, and that is an incredible book for the chiropractic profession. It's a children's book, it's illustrated, but it has the chiropractic message within there. And we're going to talk both about that book and some of the other books today so that you can get some insights from a multiple award-winning best-selling author. Maria, welcome. So grateful for you to take time out of your schedule to talk to us about writing today. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. And I wanted to share my perspective on writing for your group. And when you are writing a, um, do you want me to talk about that? I'll talk about the children's books first and then we'll go on to other things. But because the way that these were written to be informative, I did a lot of research so that I had a lot of facts. And then I thought about how do those facts, what kind of characters should I have to illustrate that? And that is how I came up with Sammy Sense because he has the sections. Because for chiropractic, I thought it would be a good parallel between the sections in his body and the sections in your spine. That is why I came up with how I came up with Sammy. Which is true. But if I can stop you, because I know there's a background to this story as well. I'd love to hear what motivated you, your experience to write this book. Because when chiropractors write a book, they have to have a purpose. And there's many reasons why you can want to write a book. Sometimes it's a, you know, it's a, 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 an inspiration. You've got a message you want to share. Other times it's to promote and grow your practice, or it might be you have a new, unique way of doing things. But you've got a different reason, and I love your story about this book. So let's start with the story okay. and how okay. you put that into the book, because this is so exciting for chiropractors to hear as well. Okay, so great. Well. What, what happened was, okay, so in the 90s, back in the 90s, that's a ways back, I was raise, uh, we were raising two girls and one of, my, one of them was having trouble breathing at night. She was around seven then. And I was laying in bed at night and I would listen to her just to kind of hear her breathing because it wasn't, it wasn't what it should be. And we went to the doctor and they said, that she should take, she should have an inhaler and, um, you know, take medicine and this sort of thing. And at seven, I was not really thrilled about that and neither was she, but I wasn't quite sure what to do about it. But I had at the time, I had childcare in my home and one of the little boys, his grandpa, Dr. Hurst, was, was my chiropractor. And, and of course he went because grandpa was, grandpa was the chiropractor. So of course he went and I thought, well, I wonder if we took her to him, if it would help. You see, because at that time, not, it was not really heard of that people would take their children to the chiropractor. But I was like, well, if it might help, well, let's see what happens. So we took her in. And they adjusted her and she had such a great uh, improvement because her lungs cleared that T3 in the back, must straighten that out. And her lungs cleared and she was just doing so well. And I was like, oh, where is, where is the story about this? How does this work? How do you explain to a child? Like, how was I explaining to her? What, how do you explain to a child? Well, I'm taking you to the chiropractor doing what? You know, some children, they're you gonna what? And so I wanted to have a way to explain what happens when you go to the chiropractor. So, because, and because she had done so well, I thought other people needed to know about this. And of course we kept her away from the allergens. You don't go rolling in the grass. You know, you, you are, you don't get her in the round smoky areas or something, but just taking the normal precautions and making sure that she was aligned, she did so well. There was no inhaler. There was no, you know, she did not have to take medicine. And so she was happy and I was happy. It was great. 
So at that time, I thought, well, I am writing the book and I am a teacher. And I'm, uh, so, and at that time, I wasn't, at that time, I was just, I was a mom at that time, but I was determined to write this book. And uh, so I did. And there was no way to get the book out at that time. I had Dr. Hurst review. And at that time, Dr. Onrig was early in her practice, but I sent it to her and she reviewed it and she loved it. And I was like, all right. So we, so I kept it in my notebook because I couldn't get it out any other way. And then in about 2013, I, we were coming into the age of all of this technology. And my husband said to me, have you found an illustrator for that book that you were thinking about? And I said, you know what? I did find an illustrator. And he said, all right, then let's do it. So in 2013, Sammy the Centipede was born. All right, he's been doing well. He's been helping a lot of people. And since that time, uh, we've done Sammy the Centipede in Spanish. And then we said, well, what else is happening in the world? My mission is to make children's lives better and happier and healthier and not have to go through all the things that we go through. And so we wrote, Sammy the Centipede goes to the market. And that again is about eating healthy and um, encouraging children to eat healthy. And that encourages families to eat healthy. And we have that one also in Spanish. And of course, the dentist wanted one too. So we got the dentist one. And then one of my favorite ones is the Sammy the Centipede Gets Fit, where Sammy goes through the seasons and plays with his friends and goes outdoors and there's a family in here and it encourages them to, to go outside and get fit. And then in the back, there's the ABCs of exercise. There's many activities you can do. President's uh, Council on Fitness, we talk about, uh, here's a chart where you can chart the activities that your family is doing. For the week. All of these books, the way I wrote them was that I researched the facts, what is happening, what is the best information. Then I worked it into the story of well, what would have to happen for them to, to experience this, um, these facts, what, what would we use. And then after I got done, I, because I wanted them at the highest level of education, I went to people in the field of each one of these fields and had them review the book and have them talk to me about the approach. How would it sound? How does it sound to the family, to the child, um, to them? It was most important for me that I wanted it to sound like something they would say to their, to their uh, patients or their clients, that it would be what they would want to educate. And that is why, that's why I think they're so successful because they are based on fact, they're fun, they engage the family and the children. So everybody wins, everybody's having a great time and it's doing what it's designed to do. And so to me, that is how I approach um, all of the writing. And because this is an author's group, I am going to talk about this book briefly. It's not chiropractic, but this is a best-selling book in this category. It's called How to Get Your Joy Back. It's a midlife career transformation book for women. Okay, it's based a lot on my experience because I left the corporate world and decided to do the things I wanted to do, which these books are part of. The research for that is that I, again, I made a lot of, I had over a hundred references in that book. So people on the online version, all I have to do is click on the links. So if you are doing your book and you have an online version, you can make, you can put links in that book where people can go exactly where they need to go um, to articles or to other books or whatever. You make it totally clickable on eBooks. I had it indexed. I went to a really great index and I had her do the index on the back, uh, in the back, because I wanted it really reference friendly. I know chiropractors have a lot of technical information they want to, um, want to share. So you can put that in the, the footnotes and you can also put it in the index and get it where it needs to go. As far as the writing, as far as the writing part of it, I do use a mind mapping process to get a big sheet of paper. You put whatever you've got in the middle, your main 
um, topic, and then you just brain dump everything. But as you're doing it, you can do it in a way that you are making your main topics and you think about it and you put a new one for all the main topics. Then if you have a thought about, oh, it's that so easy because you can just go over and do it. You can also do mind mapping on a computer. I prefer mine on paper, but you can go on a programs on the internet and do that You know, if you prefer that. To me, I like to pen to the paper. I want to be able to um, you know, write when I want to write. And then once you have those things figured out, your main topics, you can also do it the sticky note method where you take your pad of sticky notes, you put your main topics, and then when you're getting ready to do the whole, like, how is this book going to flow? You can put that on a big sheet of paper too and take your sticky notes, put them there. Do you think, to, and you look and you say, okay, is that the right progression? If not, ah, move the sticky note. Again, you can do it by paper. You can do it on your computer. Um, whatever is easiest for you to arrange whatever it is, you know, that your, your thoughts. And another thing I, I have been using lately is Evernote. If you do not have Evernote, it is totally worth it. Because I sit on my computer, I have ideas all day long. I put Evernote on my task bar and Evernote is um, comprised of notebooks that you put topics on and, it, and you can add a note. So you can add something to that particular subject. So all I have to do is click on Evernote, go to content ideas, Bam, then I make a note because I don't have time to deal with it right now, but it came to my head, right? So I can put it in there. And then when I'm ready to write, I'm ready to write a blog post. I'm ready to write on my book. I'm ready to do something. All the information is right there in the Evernote. So that has been a good tool as well. Gee, that's a, a, an amazing brain, brain dump. I really appreciate you going through all of that. I've got a couple of questions because I think again, in the context of, you know, working with, you know, chiropractors to, to write their books, to get their message out. There's a couple of things that I think that a deep dive would really, in this context, because we've, we've interviewed so many practitioners, so many amazing insights, but not yet have we spoke to anyone who's done an anthology. So we've got, you know, Sammy the Centipede um, you know, goes to the chiropractor, Sammy the Centipede goes to market, Sammy the Centipede um, gets fit. And we've got this in the next one, and I happen to know that you're also going to be bringing out uh, Sammy the Centipede in a mental health area. So we've got this anthology of books. How do you link anthologies together? How do you start with a single idea and build that into continuity, expanding the message and still maintaining, uh, I guess, consistency with the original plot, theme and characters? Okay, so you have to have an overarching main topic. So for instance, with me, let's just take Sammy. Sammy is all about health. All these books are about health. Now I could have gone off and written stories about him doing all kinds of things, but I wanted to focus this character and these characters, I wanted them to be on health. So they were known for health. These Sammy the Centipede books, and I always say on topics for health because that's what they're for. That was before. So the overarching thing was health. So what do we need for good health? Well, we need chiropractic. We need to get fit. We need market. We need nutrition. We need fitness. We need mental health, right? So then those all break off the main topic, right? So in chiropractic, you might take one aspect of chiropractic and you know as doctors that there are different sections within that main overarching topic. So you might have your series on whatever it is, subluxation or spinal problems or whatever, you know, whatever uh, bit main topic you want to talk about, there's always subtopics in there. And so you could either make it a book or you could make it a booklet or you could make it a digital asset for your business doesn't necessarily have to be a book. It could be a digital um, asset that you make on a particular topic. You know, and because we have so much access to um, technology right now, there's a lot that can be done. Yeah, I love that. And, um, 
So that's that's part of what we're right. Doing. So you start with this overarching vision, and I love the fact. I mean, from a chiropractor's perspective, you've got you know, Sammy goes to the chiropractor. Great, we've got the chiropractic paradigm already built within into that, and the anthology extends to the three T's: traumas, toxins, thoughts. And so he go, Sammy gets fit. So you're addressing the physical activity component of that. Sammy goes to market. So you're looking at the diet and nutritional aspect of that. And as you bring mental health into that, you'll be thinking there'll be optimism and positivism and addressing stress in that. So you've created an entire anthology around the chiropractic paradigm within a children's uh, illustrated fictional book, but yet hold such a powerful message. And when I interrupted you early in that conversation, because I wanted to, to, to bring some understanding before we got to this point. So now you've got this message of health. It's, it's consistent. And what I love about that is there's no semi goes parachuting because he wants to be a daredevil. You've kept it aligned with health. And then you also, semi has segments to represent that spinal orientation. So I'd love to just talk for you to talk to people watching this, um, you know, listening to this, how do you bring, in this case, you brought a centipede representing the spinal segments into the dialogue, into the communication, into the message. How did you brainstorm that? And, you know, what, what was your realisation? And then how did that message get woven into the, in, into the textual component of the book? Well, in the very beginning, uh, the brainstorming part was, um, what kind of character would I use to explain chiropractic? What, what kind of a character would, would help you know, the most to explain. I could have picked a lot of different characters. You know, there are many characters, but the reason, uh, because the reason that I did pick <clears throat> Sammy was because the centipede was because it does so much. He can move like a spine moves, right? He can be in line like a spine is. He can get out of line like a spine is. It can all relate to, so it, so it's easy when you go, when you have him with his little pointer and he's pointing to the spinal column, even a child can understand that there are sections to Sammy's body and there are sections to a person's body and their spine, right? Because they're kind of aligned like that. So it was, to me, I like the comparison between the sections of him and the spine. That's kind of how I decided that I was gonna use him that way and he can get all kinked up like when he fell out of the tree or he crashes on his bike you know kids can do that too they they can crash they can get their spine kinked up and then they're not they're not feeling very well then um, and so they feel the need that they need to do something to make it better so i was trying to get into the mind of a child and then how do we relate that like kids like, yeah, I rode my bike, I've crashed and burned, I've been climbing trees, get up my knees and do all, you know, and, but look at that centipede, what a mess, he's a mess. So he goes, you know, he, he talks about going to the chiropractor. So it becomes something natural for a child to go to the chiropractor or natural to go to the store and get good food or natural to go outside and play and move their body and do things that need to be for the children do, but they don't do anymore <laughs> very much. You know, there, there's a lot of, sorry to say, there's so many that are sitting with those computers all day. And uh, now that's kind of a necessity because of school. So that's all the more reason they need to get away from the computer and go outside, step away, go outside, get fresh air, do something else to get your body moving. That's why I just think these books are so timely, you know, right now. I mean, they were when I wrote them and they are more now, more now than ever now, Absolutely. because we are so cooped up inside everywhere, everywhere. And so, yeah. how, how have practitioners and parents respond to this? Because again, we're thinking about, you know, authors might be out there going, I've always had a, wanted to write a children's book and it'd be so great for the profession and so great for the children. So how do you think if someone's got that in their mind that their colleagues are going to respond to this and we, is there an opportunity to get it into other practices? So how have chiropractors responded? How have children responded? And, you know, wh where is your book ending up? Well, 
Um, the, I have, I have really like um, dealing with the chiropractors themselves because they understand the importance of this and it helps them communicate this to families and to children. It helps them. They're like, oh, I have this book here or they keep it in their office or they can give it as a gift or if they have a special party or a special something going on, they can use them as favors or as a raffle or whatever so to kind of spread that message. But uh, in the States here, I've been to chiropractic conventions and Sammy's been very well received. In fact, I have an eight foot long giant Sammy the centipede. <laughs> He's real <laughs> and <laughs> I've taken him places. And so it's been well received and also by uh, chiropractic parents love it because this is what they do all day and they can take it home to their children and talk about it. You know, the bedtime story. <laughs> great. <laughs> this is what are you doing? This is what I do all day, you know, so this is kind of nice too. And it's fun for the kids because Sammy's a fun guy. I mean, he's very colorful and he, you know, the kids can relate and the parents like it because that's in reinforcing uh, the, the, what is good for them. And they can share it with the kids that come to the house and the neighborhood. It's something they have in their bookshelves, you know, these kind of things. So they grow up. They grow up with Sammy and all of his adventures. When they and grow up with the principal. It beca right becomes there. a part of their life. You know, it's, it's, it becomes the, the fun thing. You know what Sammy did the other day? You know, let's go to the store and see what there, let's see what there is there. Yeah. You know, and then have the chat. This is the best thing you can do for your children is just involve them in the shopping process to get them to eat right. And I just, it's so important to have them pick and help them, have them help you prepare it it's just that is just really you know thank you so much i know the chiropractors listening to this that, that message will touch their heart because this is what is in their heart their, their desire to serve to impact the health and lives of families within their practices outreach more effectively to the community share the message and principles of chiropractic and embody it within the lifestyles of the people within their practices and communities and a book certainly allows you to do that and so the yes. fact that you're sharing this and it's such a strong message to reinforce you know what it is chiropractors want to do so one i'm grateful for your book two i'm grateful that it's available to chiropractors to put into their practices and and make available to their parents but the last question i really want to bring um, to the surface which is you, this is a bestseller within the the, the chiropractic field um, on mm -hmm. amazon what did you do after having you know, brainstormed it and had this experience that motivated you to write this? Then you've got an illustrator and you've brought it together in this beautiful illustrated package that compellingly shares your message and the message of chiropractic. But there's a step to making it a bestseller to get mm -hmm. it in the hands of many doctors and many families and many, um, you know, I guess, um, online sales process. I'd love your insights in what you did, the experience that you had to bring it to that bestseller status. Okay, so in the early years, of course, you nobody knows about your book, right? When you write it, you put it up there. You can't just expect that people are going to come along and take it. You have to go out and you have to share it. So that's what I did. I went out and I went to the chiropractic community. I went to some conventions down in California. I went to California Jam down there a couple times. And I went to um, the Washington State Chiropractic People, I have a, an article in their magazine. It was called Plexus. And I had, let's see, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, all right. Plexus right here. All right. So had they, I was able to have an article in, in Plexus. And then I believe there was something in Cairo Economics. And there was something in the massage, uh, in the massage magazine that, you know, had it. So I looked for ways to get it out where um, chiropractors would read it, be able to see it. Uh, I also, I've been to uh, Life Chiropractic College in Georgia. I went out there to uh, their, their college and went to one of their events. And so I went out and I have, and really became known in the chiropractic community. That is really what it took. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Claudia was great. Um, when I launched, she loves Sammy, her entire team. Uh, she was 
promoting that to her entire pe pediatric team. She loves Sammy. And so that was uh, really, she was really helpful too in the, in the people that see this book and they understand the importance of what it can do and the family wellness doctors, chiropractors, they, they love it. And I also went back East when they had the big, I was in Virginia, it wasn't this time, the time before I went to that big family wellness convention back then. And I took Sammy, I had Sammy book shipped and I took him and um, that was another way to get the word out. So whatever you are trying to do, you need to get it in front of the people who, who need it and who want it the most. So that is how I, it started in the beginning is I, I really went out and said, here you go. This is what we have and made it available so that Sammy was known. And so now he is known because I did a lot of work. And so now that, you know, he still pops up on the Amazon list on the chiropractic top 100 of chiropractic. He still pops up there because people love him. And he was probably one of the first chiropractic books for children. There are other ones, but I, uh, Sammy's been around a long time and people enjoy him. And I think it's because he's such a happy little guy, but his message is educational. And then all the other books go with it too. And so that was really my purpose is that I wanted a health series. Like you said, he's not off parachuting because that has nothing to do with health. So the, I wanted them to be known as the Sammy the Centipede books for children on health topics, health topics. That was it. And that's, I'm holding on that because that is really um, what he was made for. And so I think that's why he's been. Beautiful. And Marie, you have done such a good job with that. And, you know, you've, you've, you've shared the chiropractic message uh, far and wide to make it a bestseller in, its, in, a, in and of its own right is an incredible achievement, but to do it in the chiropractic field, sharing the chiropractic message as a non-chiropractor, uh, we are so grateful and appreciative for you taking the time, effort and energy to do that. And, you know, I, I know that there are many chiropractors that will reach out now after this, grab this book, put it in their practice and continue to educate our children in our practices to become you know, not only healthy and better through the principles of the book and chiropractic, but to become aware and also, um, you know, sharing with their families as they grow from children to adults, because what you read as a young age influences your mind, alters your perceptions and creates habits for life. So, so grateful for you, for your message, um, taking time out to, to share this with my audience here. And so thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.